Hey guys, again, uh, it's me. Um, Nitro Framework is uh, basically a front-end uh, JavaScript framework for uh, uh, for Ajax-driven uh, websites, which are built on the back end uh, on top of the NetA framework. Because NetA framework has a couple of very interesting uh, and pretty much easy to use features, which make uh, building uh, Ajax-driven websites very easy, but uh, obviously, you need something to drive this from the from the client side, and Nitro is one of the options you have to do that. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, are you going to build some demo project? Or I see demo here. Yeah, so um, I figured uh, I'll, I would. Uh, I mean, there's uh, you can you can you can uh, get more information about Nitro anytime uh, uh, from. Uh, the two two best places to get info are the uh, Nitro GitHub, where there's a, a, a wiki with some information, uh, and then there's the Nitro forum where you can ask any questions you have. That's for the future. But today, I thought we might try to walk through the uh, some of the basic features and a couple of the more uh, advanced extensions uh, uh, of Nitro. Uh, uh, and we can do it. We can do that all together. Like um, if you, uh, if you'd like. Uh, sorry, I just lost the screen here. Yeah, if you'd like, you can just uh, clone this repository and uh, walk through uh, the the examples uh, one by one uh, live with me, or, or or just watch as I'm doing here because I'll be doing the same. Uh, the 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 repository contains some ten or or eleven comments. Uh, starting from a basic uh, uh, blog app built on top of Nete without any Ajax integration at all, and then building on top of it with every other comment, uh, uh, extending it, improving things, and touch touching upon uh, uh, upon issues that might arise and stuff like that. So, so, so if you'd like, go ahead, clone this repository, uh, and uh otherwise uh, just keep on keep on watching um cool so go ahead all right so i've got it open here um first thing you should do if you're if you're uh uh, uh going along on your own uh laptop or computer is after you you clone the repository you want to go ahead and uh, check out the first comment uh, in the repository, which is called base project. Uh, you don't need to do anything else. Uh, just check out that comment. And if you also want to run it, then you want to uh, open a terminal, go to the uh, public uh, directory within the repository and run the built-in PHP web server, which uh, you can do easily with uh, just, you know, uh, PHP minus L, localhost uh, uh, colon 8000 or something and open it up i have already have i already have this prepared here and we'll let's check it out the uh, the the blog app is really just an example this is not how uh, a blog would be really implemented because obviously there would be some authentication before you can create posts and stuff like that but for the sake of the example i think it will work just uh, just right uh, you, you have uh, uh, blog posts. Blog posts have some uh, can have some tags attached to them, and they can have comments. There's a comments section, and this is implemented in the in the uh, in the app using uh, two presenters. There is a homepage presenter, which is uh, just a list of the latest blog posts, and there's a post presenter which uh, is uh, a, 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 the, the, the detail page of an individual post, as well as uh, the editor for editing or creating new posts. Uh, if you have all that up and running, or if it's uh, obvious what, what's happening, or oh, one thing I haven't mentioned, there's a couple of components. Uh, which uh, uh, encapsulates some of the some of the things that are going on here. There's a component that lists the tags of a post. There's a component that just shows the number of comments per, uh, f for a given post, and there's a component uh, uh, managing the comment section, all of it, 
uh, both the uh, displaying and the uh, creating of new comments. So if I uh, type in this, and I create a new comment, then you can see there's a, 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 there's a new, new uh, the number increased in the in the uh, counter component, and there's a new comment, and then there's a beautiful flash message about the comment having been added. But what you might have also noticed is that when I submitted the form, the page jumped all the way up, and uh, like like that's a really jarring experience. Uh, and if you uh, were to watch this in uh, your network log, you would have seen that uh, upon submitting the form, uh, there was an, uh, a full page reload. There was an HTTP request that submitted the form. Then that resulted in a redirect, and the redirect resulted in, resulted in reloading the whole page. Uh, we can uh, try to do this better. And to do it better, uh, let me get back here. Uh, we'll start with uh, integrating Nitro on the very most basic level. So let's go ahead and check out uh, the first step. Uh, and if you're if you're in a uh, uh, in an uh, IDE like PHP Storm or anything which can show you a, a, a diff of the uh, of the of the individual comments, then you can follow easily what's being done. So, for instance, in this first comment. You can see we, we, we've done a couple of things. For uh, one, uh, we have uh, installed the Nitro Netta Bridges package. That's just a, a, a bridge uh, which uh, uh, gives you a couple of um, uh, latte macros uh, that you can use in your templates. And it gives you a couple of shorthands for dealing with the uh, most basic things uh, related to uh, building an AJAX-driven backend for, for your site. We've also uh, installed uh, the, the Nitro builds. Uh, these are just, uh, uh, you, you, you can grab those from uh, the Nitro website, even though I'm not sure the online builder that's there is really up to date. I'll have to check that. But anyways, for the sake of the demo, grab that. But uh, probably, if you're going to be serious about building a, a, a full website with Nitro, you'll probably want to uh, build it yourself, which is done using uh, Gulp and a couple of, a couple of Gulp plugins. Uh, and then you would install Nitro itself from NPM, along with other things like, uh, for instance, Bootstrap, which this block is using for, for the style sheets and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so, so, so we're now, uh, uh, we, we have installed the, the, the Netta Bridges package, uh, and we have installed Nitro itself. Now we need to uh, integrate those with our existing app. So how do you do that? Well, on the back end, this is easy. On the back end, we just we probably already have some uh, base presenter class, which which probably extends the the Nete application UI presenter. Uh, what we need to do is we have to change that to uh, the Nitro UI presenter, which itself directly extends the Nete application UI presenter. Uh, and if we can't do that because we already need to extend another uh, uh, presenter class, we can get around it by just using a trait, because this presenter class, uh, it just uh, uses the presenter utils trait out of the Nitro Bridges package, and then just uh, sets some stuff up. The important thing is that this will uh, what this will do, uh, extending the base presenter class from Nitro, what it will do is it will take care of automatic redrawing of uh, snippets uh, on the presenter. Uh, because when your uh, site is built, uh, is fully AJAX driven, um, you always need to be redrawing some snippets, almost always. I mean, there's a couple of situations where you, do, where, where, where you just want to send a JSON back, but most of the time you'll want to be redrawing some snippets. And because 
also most of the time you'll be wanting to redraw the same snippets with every request uh nit the nitro base presenter um, uh, simplifies that so it will uh, uh th th there's a uh, there's a uh, uh, it, 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 there are a couple of uh, uh, options you have, but the, by default, it will redraw a snippet called content, uh, which will then register in the in, in the, the template. And uh, because in our scenario, the content snippet is everything from down uh, from here on down, we'll also want to redraw the header snippet, which we have here, and. To do that, the base presenter class uh, calls the set default snippets present uh, method in the presenter's uh, startup method. But that's that's it. You don't have to do anything else. You just, like I said, you change to the, uh, the Nitro UI base presenter class, and optionally, if you need to be redrawing more than just the content snippet with every request, you would call set default snippets to tell the Nitro integration which snippets should be redrawn unless other snippets have been marked for redrawal before. Uh, then we'll uh, then we need to look at the at the uh, layout template. Um, probably it's gonna be easier if I show this here. Uh, let me close this. Uh, what we did here is we have added uh, the Nitro style sheet. We have added the Nitro uh, JavaScript which we have added in the body section at the very start of the body uh, because uh, um, you want it to start loading as soon as possible, but you also, if it's already cached or and it executes instantly, you want it to have instant access to document body. So that's why you put it in the body tag, but you put it at the start. and to make it uh, asynchronous so that it doesn't block the uh, rendering and loading of the rest of your page, you use the async and defer attributes to make it load asynchronously. Other than that, we need to uh, mark the header element and the main container element as snippets, which we do the usual way. We just use the built-in Nete uh, Latte macro uh, and a snippet, and that's it. And Right now, if I go back to the the demo and I show you what it looks like now, it, it looks the same. But when you when you when you take a look at the network tab of your uh, of your browser uh, and you navigate to say one of the uh, post details, you'll see that the page wasn't reloaded. That just an uh, Ajax request has been made and the new uh, assets have been loaded because those uh, obviously need to be loaded separately. But just the, the, the part of this, uh, the, the page that changed has been loaded via Ajax and the rest stayed the same, no reloading of the style sheets and other stuff. Uh, but so, so this works. It will also work with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, comments and everything else because uh, uh, by default, uh, the, if if you're um, uh, if if you're building this uh, the way you should be, like redirecting after a form is submitted and stuff like that, uh, most of that Nitro will handle out of the box, but it doesn't really always do what you want it to or uh, look the way you would like it to. Um, because for instance, now if I add a new comment here, uh, like uh, you can see that the uh, the flash message has been rendered differently because Nitro doesn't yet know anything about how flash messages should be treated. Uh, the page scrolled because Nitro by default uh, uh, takes care of scrolling as well. And the comment has been added. But the most uh, uh, weird thing I think right now is that if I now go back, I'm still on the same page, even though 
uh, from my uh, f the way I think I would feel as a user, this wasn't a full page. wasn't supposed to be a full new entry in the in the in the browser's history because I would expect the previous page to have been the home page. But no, after submitting the form, a new history entry is added, even though not much on the page has changed. So. Uh, next up, we're going to try and remedy some of these uh, little issues. Uh, I keep uh, switching this around, but uh, if we if we go back to the to to the to the Git history and we check out the next revision, that one is going to introduce some uh, some of the concepts of how to configure the very, very basic of behaviors that are built into Nitro. Uh, first up, uh, what we need to do to get this up and running is we need to register the Nitro Bridges extension in our, our dependency injection container. What this extension will do is it will register a couple of Latte macros, like I mentioned before, uh, that we want to use uh, for some of our uh, some of our needs, also there's a couple of changes in the style sheets, just so that the flash messages uh, look the same way if they're when they're rendered by a lot, by Nitro as they would have looked if they were rendered on uh, the server side, and then uh, we are going to go ahead and add a couple of data attributes. Um, most of the, uh, the the most common Nitro behaviors on the front end can be controlled using data attributes. These include uh, data history, uh, data transition, data scroll to. Uh, the data history attribute uh, is a boolean. It's controlling whether navigating to a given link should create a new entry in the browser's history or not. By default, Nitro will create a new history entry for every uh, link it handles. Uh, but sometimes that's not what you want, like in the example with the comments. So to turn off the history handling, uh, you want to add the, we, we can see that here, comments. You want to add the data history equals false attribute to the link or form that uh, that you want to exclude from from uh, from history. Uh, you, w in this step, we are doing this for both the uh, new comment form and the the button which takes care of deleting comments. The data transition attribute uh, uh, it, it controls what will be transitioned or animated. Transitions are uh, what animations are called. Uh, in Nitro in between two pages. Uh, by default, uh, Nitro will uh, transition all elements on the page which have the uh, Nitro transition auto CSS class, uh, which means that, for instance, if we uh, add that class to our content snippet, like here, and then we add a, a, a class which actually represents the kind of transition that should be made. Uh, there are a couple built in into Nitro, and you can obviously build uh, build, build others. Uh, there's a there's a uh, 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 there's documentation for that on the in the in the Nitro uh, wiki. Uh, then, uh, upon navigating to another page. Uh, Nitro will figure out that yeah, it should be animating the article element and it should apply the fade transition. The, the transitions, it should be noted, the transitions uh, aren't uh, performed by scripting. They are performed by swapping a couple of CSS classes on the element and all of the animations are actually done via uh, style sheets. So it should be uh, uh, accelerated and it should be pretty fast and uh, it should work pretty pretty well. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So, like I said, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, new comment form and the uh, button for deleting comments, 
We've added the data history attributes to prevent uh, Nitro from uh, adding a new history entry when that element is activated. We've added the data transition uh, attributes to control the transition that's going to happen when the uh, new page is being uh, transitioned to. Uh, right now, we're just disabling the transition, but we also could have used a selector here instead of false. We could just do uh, something like uh, whatever. And then uh, Nitro would look for this element, for this selector to transition it instead of the default ones with the Nitro transition auto class. And lastly, there's the uh, data scroll to attribute, which controls uh, where Nitro should scroll to when the new page is loaded. By default, Nitro will look for the topmost element on the page, which has been updated by the Ajax request. So uh, uh, that's what you can see actually happening here, because we haven't yet changed anything about how snippets are rendered and redrawn. Uh, when I submit the form to, to, to add a new comment or when I delete a comment, what happens is the default snippets are, get, uh, are redrawn. Default snippets include the header, and the whole page content starting here and going all the way down. So if I now delete Johnny's comment, you can see that we've scrolled all the way to the header uh, snippet and with a, a little bit of uh, margin uh, above it, but it's not the top of the page per se. It's just that the, the, the header snippet has been updated. Uh, if we don't want to uh, consider a, a, a given element uh, when figuring out where to scroll to, we can use uh, the data scroll uh, ignore attribute like like this. Data scroll ignore true, and then if we delete another comment. The header snippet won't be scrolled to because we've just uh, added it to the ignore list. Uh, but other than that, we could uh, just disable scrolling altogether using this data attribute, or we can put, uh, put a, a number here, which would mean an offset from the top of the page, or we can put a selector, which means Nitro will look for the ele uh, for elements matching the selector and uh, scroll to the topmost element matching the selector. Uh, another thing that we've changed here, aside from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, adding the data attributes, is that we've uh, added a couple more snippets. Like we've uh, added a snippet for the comment list, so that just the comment list gets redrawn when a new com a comment is added or deleted. Uh, so no more of uh, no, no more loading of the top of the page, and uh, we've also uh, let me check here. Uh, yeah, we've we've made this this element a snippet. We've uh, added the, the the data attributes. We've also changed how flashes are rendered. This is something that will uh, that that's been done both in the template for the component uh, for the comments component and the layout component. Uh, usually, when you're rendering snippets in Nete by uh, default, you do something like this: you iterate over the uh, flashes array and you render a couple of uh, containers with the flash message. Uh, but Nitro has a built-in uh, renderer for uh, for flashes, which not only does uh, it, it does something similar to this, but it also includes a couple of important attributes, which are then uh, used by the front end, so that when you render a flash message, uh, it's it, it gets rendered the same way, no matter if it's rendered on the back end or by Nitro on the front end. Uh, so that, there's that. Then we've added the, some of those uh, data uh, attributes here, and then we've added a couple of uh, of um, uh, of elements to uh, render the 
validation messages on the form. We've changed the, the default uh, the default rendering of the form errors uh, to use the Nitro macro, similar to why we did it with the flashes, just to have it render the same way on the back end as it's uh, as it's rendered on the front end. And then we've added a couple of uh, uh, a couple of um, uh, elements to have to to house the individual. Uh, um, uh, validation message for the individual inputs. That's it for the for the uh, that's it for the comments uh, template. And in the comments component, we need to change how we react to certain events. For instance, when a comment is deleted, we no longer need to redirect because uh, Nitro can. Uh, change the uh, the the URL of the uh, of the new browser uh, uh, history entry if one were created to anything you like. So uh, instead of calling redirect as you would usually, you would call post get, which is one of the methods added by the the Nitro base presenter. The post get method will redirect normally when the request is made. Uh, normally without Ajax, but when the request is made using Ajax, uh, the postget method will just add the URL that would have been redirected to into the payload. So and and, and it won't stop uh, if I mean if it's if postget redirects, then this is the place where uh, the processing ends because it will throw a redirect exception as redirect normally does. But when it just uh, when the request is made using AJAX and the postget method doesn't redirect, then you can uh, continue rendering as you would normally, uh, which means that in certain scenarios you don't need to redirect to re uh, uh, to to uh, redraw the whole page because you don't need to redraw the whole page. You just need to redraw uh, a small portion of it, like for instance the list of the uh, uh, list of the comments, so that the new comment appears in the list or uh, uh, or, or disappears from it in the case of the of the delete uh, signal. Uh, so that, that that that's basically all you need to do in the uh, in the in the uh, uh, in the comment uh, component and in the uh, new post uh, uh, template. All we've done here is the same as we did with the new comp uh, new comment form. We've added macros to render the validation messages for us, both on the back end and on the front end. That's it. And in the layout template, uh, we've changed, as I've said before, we've changed the flashes rendering to use the Nitro built-in rendering, and uh, we have added the transition classes so that the uh, the page content is faded out and in when transitioning to a new page. What this looks now, what this looks like now is boom. No scrolling to the top anymore. When I now uh, go back. Uh, I've actually went back from the wrong page, so th th this doesn't this didn't do what I expected. But say I'm here and go to the post, delete and uh, a post, and now I go back. You can see I went back to the to the home page and not back to the post because the the, the extra history entry isn't added. Um, improving upon this further. Uh, there's because there's one thing that that still doesn't work the way we want it to work, uh, and that's this. Uh, watch this. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna uh, see that uh, if um, notice that the component counter says there's zero comments on this post, and obviously that's true, uh, seeing as there are actually no comments. But when I add a new comment, the comment appeared, but the counter still says zero. And that's because the new uh, comment was added within the uh, comments component. Uh, the comments component re redrew its snippets, and just the snippets of the comments, uh, comments uh, component have been uh, rendered 
when uh, uh, rendering the response. So the comment counter component wasn't even created, let alone redrawn. So uh, how to how do we uh, uh, fix that? We can fix that using uh, the uh, aforementioned component events extension, uh, which we install from Composer. Uh, we register it. In, we register it in uh, the component uh, in the application uh, config, and then because. For some reason, whoever developed this, uh, this the, the backend for this blog, they already made the model uh, use uh, Symfony's event dispatcher. So all we really need to do now is we need to listen for this event, for, for, for the event which is dispatched when a new comment is added or, or deleted, which we do by making the comment count com uh, component be an event subscriber the way we would do with any service that wants to be an event subscriber so we we just tell it which events to subscribe to and which method should be called when the event is dispatched which is this and the method itself only just redraws the con uh, component that's it nothing else that's all we need to do. One other thing that we did is we made the the uh, comment uh, counter component a snippet as well because it wasn't before. There was no reason for it to be a snippet. It, uh, it, it should be a snippet now. And obviously, yeah, we installed the component events extension. Now, if we try, try this again, you see there is one comment in the counter and we can see that there's actually one comment in the actual comment section. If we now delete this comment, boom, the comment disappeared, and voila, the comment counter also says zero. And if you look at the uh, uh, actual uh, uh, Ajax request, which has been uh, which has been uh, uh, sent by Nitro, you can see that just the comment list has been rendered, and the comment count counter uh, the comment counter content has been rendered uh, that's it for uh, component events and then we might want to start looking at other uh, uh, features of the front end that would benefit from a facelift one of those being the uh, uh, the confirmation that well, the user gets when they want to delete a comment. So right now, uh, if I want to delete a comment, the code, uh, wait, what? What just happened? Oh, I already checked this out, but I haven't, uh, I haven't, sorry about that. I haven't uh, refreshed the page. So the integration was there, but not there. <laughs> uh, once again. If I now want to delete the comment, the page will ask me using the built-in window confirm. That's kind of 90s. I, I kind of want to get rid of that. So to get rid of that, let's check out the next revision and see what, what happens next. When I now want to delete the comment, I'm presented with a uh, customizable uh, JavaScript uh, dialog. And to do that, I'm going to need to uh, uh, use another Nitro package, which, uh, sorry about that. Nope, not relevant. Um, uh, which is the Nitro Dialogues package and the Nitro Dialogues uh, uh, confirm extension. Uh, if you if you if you're uh, using a, a pre-built package from the Nitro website, you would have to uh, make a new build at this point uh, because by default you would probably use only this. Uh, 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 core selection. Now we would have to add the dialogues and not checklist the confirm extension. Uh, since I'm using uh, uh, Gulp to build the Nitro packages, I would just uh, adjust the the configuration of the Gulp builder. 
but anyway, uh, to make use of this, uh, to, to actually make it work, on, the only thing we need to do is to change the uh, previous handler of the onclick event uh, to a data attribute asking the question we want to ask. Data prompt, are you sure? And uh, uh, Nitro will automatically re uh, recognize uh, this data attribute and uh, show, uh, show a confirmation box with the question you put here. And the, the link will only be followed if the confirmation is actually confirmed. Same goes for the delete post button where we've also only changed the onclick handler, uh, exchanged it for the data prompt attributes. So now even the delete button here should ask us if we're sure in a prettier way than the old, old uh, native window confirm. Uh, the, rest of the, the rest of the comment is uh, basically, th there's the edited gulp file uh, I used to build the new package that's probably not interesting right now. If you're interested in building Nitro yourself, you can check out the Nitro wiki, which describes the process. Uh, but the other, only other thing that I've changed is the style sheets to make the dialogue buttons uh, look the way they should, given the design of the page that's just cosmetics. All right, so now we have nice uh, confirmation dialogues. And what's next? We can take a look at dynamic snippets. Dynamic snippets are oh, uh, a, a large topic, which I don't want to get into uh, in a great detail, because that would be a, a, a presentation all by itself. But uh, let's put it that way. Uh, anytime you have any uh, a repetitive uh, listing of uh, comments or table rows or, or, or pictures in a gallery or stuff like that. Uh, you can not only make the whole container a snippet like we did with the comments here, uh, uh, you can make the individual entries in the list be snippets. And then when you redraw the container, uh, Nete will uh, uh, Send just the individual entries in the container uh, as uh, the, the the response snippets, which we can leverage to not redraw the whole comment list when a new comment is added. For instance, imagine if there was like already uh, 50, 100 comments here. Like, uh, well, I'm not gonna go into that now, but let's just add one to 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 see it in action. Uh, Uh, and we have a comment here. Um, if I now want to add a new comment uh, without the dynamic snippets, then this, and imagine this is 100 comments, would have been redrawn alongside the new comment. Well, I, I don't want that. So uh, I'm going to uh, make the comment list be a container for snippets, which I do by uh, adding the end dynamic uh, latte macro. The, the end dynamic latte macro is basically a shorthand uh, to let the front end uh, Nitro know uh, what IDs the, the snippets will have inside the container so that Nitro knows that the dynamic snippets belong in this container and not anywhere else. And then um, I would just add. Uh, a data attribute uh, telling the front end what the elements should look like because uh, Nete will only render the contents of the snippets, not the uh, wrapper elements. Uh, so we need to construct those uh, manually on the front end. Well, Nitro does that for us, but it needs to know how they should what they should look like. Then uh, the other thing that we've changed here is that we made the comments themselves be snippets like this. Uh, and furthermore, we've replaced the data transition attribute with data dynamic remove. That's one of the features of, uh, of dynamic snippets on the Nitro frontend. Uh, 
Data Dynamic Remove uh, basically does uh, what it sounds like it does. It will remove the snippet uh, from the page when the, uh, uh, the, the link is clicked. So that's that. And next up, we uh, just need to, I think that's it for, for, the, for the template, is it? Yeah. Next up, we just need to update uh, the way we render the snippets on the back end. So uh, what we need to do here, uh, the, the comments component was already built in a way which only loads the comments array from the model when it hasn't been set previously. So what we can do when we're, uh, when we're adding a new comment, we can just add the comment to the comments array, which will prevent the uh, whole comment section from being loaded from the database. Uh, uh, the only other thing we need to do here uh, to, to make this work uh, with the delete action is we need to uh, prevent the component uh, the component itself from being redrawn because uh, the delete uh, action is actually a signal. When a component in NetA receives a signal, it automatically gets marked as invalid, which means it would have been redrawn. But we don't want that because uh, the data dynamic remove attribute will already remove the snippet on the front end. So we only need to remove it from uh, from the model, and we need to flash a message about it, as we did before. But other than that, the component shouldn't be rendered. We could have just used uh, get presenter sent uh, payload here, technically. But the thing is, if we did that, then at the point we call this, the whole uh, uh, a life cycle of uh, not just this component, but the rest of the presenter and its other components will be skipped. So uh, the component counter, if you recall, which we integrated with this uh, using the component events extension, wouldn't be redrawn at that point, which is why we just mark the component as, as uh, not redrawn and, and leave it at that. And now if you, if you take a look what happens, when I add a new comment, uh, uh, you can see that the comment has been added. There was a different transition because the uh, uh, the dynamic snippet has a different transition, which you obviously can uh, adjust to your needs. But most importantly, uh, if you take a look at the network panel, you'll see that the uh, just the, the individual comment has been rendered. Not the whole comment section, just the, just the one comment. And if I now want to delete it because I find it offensive that Tommy has a gun, the comment is deleted. And the only snippet that's redrawn is the comment counter which we can see still is telling us the right thing. But the, the comment section itself doesn't need to be redrawn anymore because the comment is redrawn, uh, removed by Nitro on the front end. Um, that's it for, for uh, dynamic snippets here. Uh, I'll only mention briefly that dynamic snippets actually uh, can do a lot more complicated things than just just adding a snippet at the end or removing a snippet from a container. They can, uh, they can uh, be used to manage a whole order set of, uh, of uh, entries in a container. Uh, you do this by adding uh, several other uh, data attributes on the, on the container and then uh, adding uh, perhaps other data attributes or uh, sorting options on the snippets themselves. Uh, if you want to see what that looks like, check out the Nitro Wiki. It's all described there. Uh, for now, I think this is, this, is, this is it for dynamic snippets. Next up, uh, I would like to showcase the checklist component. Now, 
the uh, checklist component is an implementation of a UX pattern that I know from audio editing software. Uh, unfortunately, even though it's an amazing UX pattern, I, uh, it, it isn't very widespread. Uh, but I, boy, I would really use this uh, in. I could use this in my Gmail inbox. This is uh, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, if I go to uh, 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 a post edit uh, form, there's all those tags here, and if I want to select more than one. Normally, I would have to click them one by one by one, which is tedious. And imagine this is your Gmail inbox and you want to select all those uh, uh, promotions and just delete them. Uh, the checklist component uh, introduces uh, a simple mechanism for controlling a linearly arranged set of toggles, like, for instance, these checkboxes, using a drag gesture. So I would drag here and drag down and they're all toggled. It's smart about uh, toggling uh, 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 check checkboxes that are, have already been set to the value they should have been. It won't touch those. And that's it. Uh, the reason, um, I mean, I don't, uh, other than uh, some uh, admin interfaces, I'm not sure anybody's going to want to use this component, but I am introducing it mostly because there's some boilerplate around it to initialize it that's going to be useful for everything that you want to do with uh, other Nitro components. Uh, as you can see, to, uh, to introduce this, I had to uh, update the Nitro build package because uh, the, the checklist component wasn't a part of it before, but that's just... Uh, um, what you would do uh, anyway, because you would uh, build it yourself using a gulp and you would just change one option and it would just be there. But other than that, I need to do two things. I need to, first of all, initialize the stack library. Now, the stack library is a tiny piece of code sitting at the end of the Nitro bundle, uh, which uh, helps uh, initialize Initialize uh, inline scripts, which you include in your templates, uh, after Nitro itself has been loaded. Because we are loading Nitro using an asynchronous element, which means that if uh, there was a script here, uh, sorry, I, I'm going to have to do that here. If we had a script tag here, The, the, the script may not yet have access to Nitro because Nitro doesn't uh, may, may, have, may not have been loaded yet or initialized. Uh, and it's the same if it's inside a component. And uh, but, if, but, but if you want to, you can use the stack component uh, like this. Uh, that's in the post form template. Instead of writing the, the, the code directly in the script tag, you would wrap the code in a closure, and you would push that closure onto the stack. Uh, the, the stack initialization is just creating an empty array. That, that, that's all it is. The thing is that uh, when Nitro loads, it will walk this stack in the order in, it, it's been populated and execute all the functions that have been uh, pushed onto it. And then when they have all been executed, it will monkey patch the stack's uh, push method so that any new methods pushed onto the stack by uh, say scripts that come from snippets that have been uh, injected into the page later via Ajax requests are executed immediately. So on the initial page load, this will take care of uh, of uh, executing the code only after Nitro has finished loading. But after that, for all the scripts included uh, with uh, snippets that come later, they will be executed instantly because uh, Nitro is already ready, uh, already loaded. And then there's just a piece of code to, 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 uh, uh, to initialize the checklist we don't need to get into that because, because, like I said, you probably aren't going to use it. And if you are, then uh, you can check the documentation, which I'm not sure is actually 
up to date for the checklist component, but well, there's the forum in any case. So remember this because it's important. Uh, uh, you do want to uh, load a Nitro asynchronously. Part of the reason is that Nitro isn't really small. It's about, uh, I, I think, 150 kilobytes uh, before uh, GZIP, but anyway. And then you want to uh, um, uh, initialize the stack library and push your inline, inline code as uh, as a closure on top of the stack uh, stack array. That's it for checklist. And uh, now let's uh, let's just uh, yeah let's see what let's say I want to do a, a new post. And I, I just have to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to, yeah. Let's create a new post. And this time, let's uh, create it uh, with a pretty picture. So let, let me just grab a picture here. I'm, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, grab a picture here and go to the page. And oops, missed it. I didn't catch the, the because obviously uh, the... Uh, file inputs can be dragged and dropped into, but if you miss it, this happens. The, the, the file you dragged into your form ends up replacing your page, which doesn't really uh, 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 make people happy when they've already uh, composed the content of their post or something. So we can use the Nitro's built-in drag-and-drop support which we're, we'll, we'll in, introduce in the next uh, revision. And uh, this time, I'm, I'm just going to go through it really fast because we're, uh, I think we're uh, kind of nearing the end of the time we have, but, uh, and, and we still have a couple of things we want to check out, but uh, this is what it looks like. Refresh the page so that it uh, gets uh, ready, and then boom, there you have it. Uh, the uh, Nitro's uh, um, uh, drop zone component, as it's called, is uh, actually just a, a, um, a wrapper of uh, the built-in drag-and-drop events of the browser. It doesn't itself create a user interface. Uh, because uh, obviously user interfaces are something that everybody wants to do by themselves. You want to have your own style and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you probably don't want to have to deal with the, with the actual drag and drop events because trust me, they're a hassle. And also uh, the drop zone component integrates with NetA forms and the form validations. So for example, if I were to uh, say, well, um, uh, let me just, uh, sorry about that. If I, if I now wanna, uh, drop a, a file that's not obvi obviously not a picture. Uh, okay, I may have not activated the validations yet. Whatever happens here. The thing is that uh, if I have some validation rules on the on the uh, on the NetA forum input, uh, Nitro will uh, the Nitro drop zone will uh, will reuse those validation uh, uh, those validations for the drop zone as well. So, for instance, uh, with the form, no, it's not the common form, post form. It already has an image rule. Well, I don't know what's wrong here. Well, anyway, uh, that's drop zone. Uh, just handles the, 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 the file being dropped and tells your script about it so that you can uh, you can update your interface uh, and when the form is submitted the drop zone component will take care of uh, attaching the uh, the the file to the Ajax request 
as a regular multi-part uh, post data thing. Thing is, uh, what you should probably uh, check out now, uh, there, there's a bit of code. To, this, this really just deals with the user interface. Nothing much uh, interesting happening here. Uh, but what's interesting is that if I now submit this form, check it here. Uh, I have the drop zone helper element in the as, as a direct child of the document body. And uh, if I now submit the form, you can see that all the usual Ajax handling has been performed as usual, but the drop zone helper stayed in the page, uh, which is something that uh, is probably going to cause hassles in the future. For instance, I'm not sure, but maybe if I now go to edit this post, and then I want to add a new element. All right, well, works now, but the thing is it shouldn't because uh, th that's maybe something that, that uh, Safari handled for us because uh, the original drop zone helper element has been a part of the document at the point in time when I've created a new, created a new one and appended it to the body. And maybe the browser itself decided that it doesn't like two elements having the same ID, so it discarded the old one. But usually, uh, from my experience, browsers uh, don't do this, and they would just keep both elements around, and they would give you a notice in the console. But uh, stuff can break later when this happens. Because, for instance, imagine if uh, uh, I'm appending the next element at the end of uh, uh, the body. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're still both there, actually. So maybe it won't work the way it should. Anyway, uh, the thing is that uh, if I now have both these elements here, this one is the original one that's been created by the uh, the form when I was creating this post, and the other one is the one created when I came back to edit it. And the thing is that if I now want to do something like uh, query selector or get element by ID drop zone, I'll get the first one. I won't ever get the second one any uh, uh, anymore. And that, that, that's obviously bad because that uh, old element already has event listeners attached to it, which I would now reattach uh, for the second time. Uh, and uh, the other bad thing about this is that the, uh, even though we probably don't need it anymore, this drop zone uh, element uh, uh, from the original request uh, or the original form has re uh, references to uh, the drop zone component because the drop zone component has event listeners attached to it. So the browser can't garbage collect it, not just the element, but also the JavaScript objects that are attached to it via the event listener and whatever the event listener has closure over. So um, we wanna we, we wanna uh, take care of this uh, and we wanna clean it up. The way we do that is here. Uh, the difference is uh, in the original uh, comet, we would have uh, just created the checklist and the overlay element and then the drop zone locally as variables within the stack push callback. And now we've, what we've done is we've uh, extracted the variables and put all the rest of the setup into another closure, which we pass to the setup method of uh, the front end uh, uh, object representing the actual form element. Uh, and the important thing is that the snippet object representing the, snip, the element on the front end not only has a setup method, it also has, you guessed it, a teardown method, uh, which is called when the element is being removed from the page or when it's uh, content is being updated by uh, Nitro. Uh, and within the teardown callback, we can now uh, clean up all the stuff we made 
within the setup. So uh, again, uh, if I go ahead and create a new post uh, with a nice picture, uh, boom. And now you can see that the drop zone element is no longer part of the page because it's been cleaned up. Now, you may wonder, why did we get away with this, with the checklist component in the previous, uh, uh, one of the previous chapters? Uh, the reason that we got away with it is because the, the checklist component only registers a single mouse down event listener on the container element. Of the of the checklist, uh, which would be uh, this, I think, or or maybe yeah, this. This uh, this div has a mouse down listener, and uh, other than that, uh, the the checklist component uh, is uh, changes nothing. It, it doesn't touch the the document object model anywhere else. Uh, and when the when the main content snippet is redrawn, for instance, when you submit the form, uh, the whole contents of the content snippet are discarded, meaning uh, or including this container element. And uh, uh, thanks to the way that the garbage collection works in uh, JavaScript, both the container and the event listener, along with everything the event listener has closure over, will be garbage collected the next time garbage collection runs. Uh, contrast this with the on component because uh, it registers event listeners on the actual document element itself, and it uh, uh, attaches a DOM element outside of the content snippet. And th that's something that Nitro doesn't know about. It's, it has no way of knowing about it. So it can't be cleaned up automatically, not by Nitro and not by uh, garbage, garbage collection. Uh, and uh, the reason that we included the checklist components cleanup when we've updated the drop zones cleanup is, well, it's basically just good manners to clean up after your scripts when they're leaving the page. So I, I highly recommend you do it. But yeah, there are some scenarios uh, when you can be sure you don't need to clean up because the cleanup will happen automatically. Uh, uh, Courtesy of a uh, courtesy of uh, garbage gar garbage collection. Um, oh, and now the last thing that I want to introduce, uh, we've already touched the point a little, not uh, intentionally or not 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 uh, in its full in its full extent, but it's uh, dialogues. So we now have uh, sorry. We now have a full page uh, for the for the new post form or and and for the edit post form, and maybe we don't want to have a full page. Maybe we just want to have a nice uh, a, a modal dialog open uh, have open over the page and uh, edit the post there and go back like this. Uh, Nitro. Uh, I mean, this is this is the base uh, on which the the confirm extension is built. The con con confirm extension just really displays a small dialog with two buttons, but the dialogues themselves are capable of much more, including rendering snippets. And uh, the integration for that uh, isn't even really that hard because, like I said, it's part of the built-in. Uh, 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 handling snippets is built into the dialogue components. So if you have a Nitro package which includes the uh, dialogues uh, component, all you need to do is add a couple of data attributes and the dialogue form macro. The, the, this 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 latte macro uh, will translate the the two parts of the the, the content string. Uh, to some IDs that uh, are then used in, as part of the the uh, uh, 
the payload that gets sent from the server when the, the request is handled via Ajax. And uh, it tells Nitro, uh, basically this tells Nitro, hey, there will be a dialogue called post and its content will be the content snippet. And the reason that we, you're not writing just a data attribute here is that uh, the, 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 the macro will prefix this properly for the component in which it is, in which it is used. So it will be uh, uh, prefixed, uh, uh, the, 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 the snippet uh, name will be prefixed with snippet dash uh, path to the component dash content and the, the the dialogue name will be prefixed similarly with dlg dash path to component dash name of dialogue other than that we just add the already described uh, data attributes data history and data transition because when we're uh, opening the 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 uh the new post editor in a dialogue it doesn't make sense to either create a new history entry or transition the page content because obviously the new uh, since since we have this uh, 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 the data attributes generated by the latte macro, uh, Nitro already knows that there will be a dialogue shit uh, opening from the request created by clicking this link. So even before the uh, the request is loaded it's already starting the animation to show the dialogue. And once once the request finishes loading, the dialogue is populated with the snippet, it's uh, uh, with the designated snippet and and uh, opened. Uh, the same thing uh, we did. Uh, the same thing we did for the new post button, we're gonna do for the edit post button that's exactly the same thing that we did uh, at the other place and the only other thing that we need to do in the templates is uh, add the end dialogue uh, macro on the actual form because uh, uh, when the form is submitted from within the dialogue uh, the, uh, if we didn't include this macro, uh, the dialog itself would be closed because that's the default behavior. When you make a new request outside, uh, uh, out of an open dialog, the dialog is closed and destroyed. But with a form, this might not be the behavior we want because if we then have some server-side validation which fails, uh the, the the validation messages would have nowhere to be rendered because the dialogue and the whole form along with it would have already been destroyed that's why we include this uh, macro on the form itself which basically says all right um when i'm uh submitted inside a dialogue the keep the dialogue around and replace the content of the dialogue with the snippet called content and then we update the handling of this in the in the uh, in the presenter for the post uh, where we only need to redraw when we're rendering the dialogue we only need to redraw the content itself we don't need to redraw the header the header is not, not not there anymore. It's not now. It's not just the uh, content. Uh, same thing for for edits, and then we need to tell the front end when we've ha when we've handled uh, the form submission and everything as well. We need to tell the front end that the should be closed. If we uh, run into validation messages or uh, uh, validation errors or some other thing that should cause the form to stay open here we just wouldn't call this uh, 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 this method and we would just redraw the content snippet and uh, render the appropriate template but since the uh, the safe post method here doesn't really care about validation and stuff because this is just a really simplified example. We can just go ahead and just close the dialogue like this. What this actually does is, again, it just adds a piece of information into the payload that gets sent from 
the back end when the 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 request is being uh, the response is being served so now uh if i'm making a new post uh notice that drag and drop still works uh which which one is this i already have that no 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 ah that's the one i want When I now want to submit this, it's been submitted. Uh, the dialog has been closed and destroyed, and we've been redirected as we should have been. Obviously, the same uh, will work when I'm already editing a post. Uh, boom. There. Done. So... I think that's it. We've gone. Uh, we went through the whole uh, demo project. The, 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 this, that, that's really all there is. Uh, if you, uh, uh, I mean, th this was supposed to really just give you an idea of the things that are built into Nitro. Uh, we can also take a look here because the download uh, page lists all the components that Nitro has. Uh, we've already talked about checklist dialogues, confirm, and drop zone. The, uh, uh, on top of those, uh, I would like to mention also the paginator component, component which uh, takes care of uh, basically uh, infinite loading, uh, and uh, the key map component, which you can use to manage keyboard shortcuts in a layered manner like uh, you would have uh, if you have a, a complex page or, or a, a, an app where there's a, a basic view but then you can open a, a dialogue on top of that view and a, a dialogue from within that dialogue and maybe i don't know whatever else then uh, each of those things uh, may need a different set of keyboard shortcuts if you want to implement them and the key map component uh, uh, makes that easier because uh, you just create uh, 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 layers of key mappings, and then you activate those layers uh, when uh, you need them, and deactivate them when they become irrelevant again. But the thing is that uh, uh, they, the, the, the key uh, shortcuts can be uh, 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 can can kind of uh, extend the previous layers like. You have uh, the bottom layer where you have a couple of shortcuts that uh, should work always globally, and then you open a dialogue on top of it, and the dialogue should have entry and escape to confirm and cancel respectively. Uh, so uh, you would just add a new layer in the key map which would handle those keys. And in fact, the key map component has a, a built in integration uh, with the dialogues component and the confirm component. Uh, so that's instance, for instance, the confirm component, if you already have, if, if you have uh, the confirm component and the key map component installed in your bundle, then confirms will by default be, uh, uh, have the, the enter key bound to confirm and the uh, escape key bound to cancel. Um, and then there's uh, uh, there's storage, which is just uh, I I don't really use that anymore. Even uh, it's a, it's a wrapper on top of uh, local storage or central storage and routing. Uh, routing is maybe interesting if you don't want to uh, write uh, component specific code within the components template. I know some people are adverse to having inline scripts in the page even though it's i think perfectly safe as long as you include the proper uh, uh the proper content security policy and a nonce which net nitro supports uh, by default if, if you if you uh, uh use the net a uh oh uh, where, where do we get show this in the presenters here. Yes, if you if you use the Nete's built-in uh, nonce macro, 
in, in your templates to, to include uh, a nonce in the script tag, then a Nitro will be able to handle that uh, according to your content security policy uh, out of the box without any configuration needed. But if you're still adverse to including inline code in your, uh, in, in your templates, I, I get it. Uh, you can then uh, make use of the routing component, which uh, includes both a traditional URL router, which you can use similarly to the router you use in uh, NetA on the back end. But it also includes what I call a DOM router, which is a router when, which routes based on CSS selectors. So it would uh, trigger when an element matching a selector appears on a page. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, again, uh, you can uh, build a custom Nitro package using this online builder uh, without needing to install uh, Gulp and having to figure out a Gulp file and stuff like that. Uh, it will work and it's probably okay for checking Nitro out, but I really do recommend you check out uh, the Nitro builder, uh, which uh, uh, the, the Gulp builder, especially, which allows you to build Nitro on the back end and uh, bundle all of your other scripts and style sheets into the package uh, in in one go. Uh, I'm, this is the, the the wiki. I mean, there is some stuff that's. Uh, that, that hasn't been uh, updated for version two yet, but most of these things are the same, and they they they're not uh, not really things that you're gonna want to integrate with anyway directly. Um, yeah, I'm getting uh, uh, bumps from the guys that we're uh, supposed to uh, uh, finish now. Uh, or maybe we have we are supposed to finish some time ago i'd like to thank you guys for watching if you're still with me if you're not then sorry i know it's been long and uh, probably boring i'm kind of a talkative guy and i don't know when to stop i'm stopping now and uh, it's been really nice uh, to uh, see you and bye bye i guess